תודה רבה. Thank you very much. ברוכים הבאים. ברוכים הנמצאים. איזה ערב מרגש. ערב של געגוע, של זיכרון. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. הערב you will hear a new language. It's Moroccan English. For 2,000 years, our people had a dream that seemed to be impossible. My parents, who lived in the Atlas Mountains of Morocco, put this dream into one word, Yerushalayim. <laughs> they were people who could not read and write, but they knew how to tell us stories about this dream. Every night, my father described this Jerusalem to us. In Jerusalem, there are trees that give milk and honey. And under these trees, there are lions and sheep. When my father would say the word Yerushalayim, he said it with great love for the world. He would kiss every letter of this holy word. So I learned to dream of Yerushalayim. I learned to long for Yerushalayim. One night, my father said that the Mashiach will come in tonight. Father, what does the Mashiach look like? My father answered and said, the Mashiach will wear a t-shirt and sandals. I met the Mashiach. He was the Shaliach of the Jewish agency. We met Aliyah in 1964 and were sent to live in a transit camp in Be'er Sheva, ma shenikra be'ivrit ma'abara. As a little girl who did not grow up in Israel and did not speak the language, how did I know to, to love Israel? I had learned to love Israel through my father's stories because the Jewish people are a nation of stories that are passed on from generation to generation. But I also learned to love Israel through songs. Every Wednesday on the radio, there was a song about Israel. I was a 10-year-old girl, and I would wait excitedly for Wednesday. This was the way I learned about Hermon Mountain, about Kever Rachel, about Emek Israel. But one sentence from a poem by Nathan Alterman named Morning Song, Sheer Boker, touched me. What else has not yet been given, we will let you have. Ma od lo natanu lach veniten. When I came to Israel, the country was already established and I asked myself, what can I give to this country? What I didn't know was that I would give my two dear sons. Eight years ago, on the eve of Passover, three angels knocked on my door. No, they didn't bring with them the prophet Eliyahu. 
Rather, they were the barrier of terrible news. My second son, Eliraz, 32 years old, and the deputy commander of Golani Battalion 12, a father of four little children. The biggest was six years old. The little was two months old. He was killed fighting terrorists in the Gaza Strip. As soon as I saw who was outside my home, I ran, I slammed the door, I shut the blinds so no one could enter. When they finally did come in, I grabbed their hands and begged them, don't say a word, don't deliver the news, just let me have my son for one more minute. Because as long as you don't say those horrible final words, my Elira still lives. This has to be a mistake, I explained, for I had already paid the ultimate price for our country's survival a dozen years earlier. Uriel, my beloved firstborn, was killed in battle in Lebanon at the tender age of 22. And as if that was not painful enough, my dear husband, Eliezer, unable to bear the loss of Uriel, died 12 years ago of a broken heart. So it was Erev Pesach. We gathered for the seder Without Eliezer, without Uriel, without Eliraz, we cried as we read from the Haggadah, Bechol dor vador, omdim alenu lechalotenu. In every generation, they rise up to destroy us. In Uriel's generation, it was the Hezbollah in Lebanon. In Eliraz's, it was the Hamas in Gaza. Every generation has its enemies, and every generation has its heroes. My sons were sensitive, modest, and observant. They did not wish for war, nor did they relish the thought of combat. But when called upon to defend their people, they did not hesitate. They simply said, Ima, the Hator Shelano. It's our turn. Uriel and Deliraz were as close in life as they now in death. Both are buried in, on Mount Herzl. And every time I arrive at Mount Herzl, I have to choose which grave to hug first. It's not natural, not right, not fair for a mother to have buried two of her children. A mother should have to decide which son to hug first, not which grave to visit first. These are not choices a mother should be forced to make. So what do I do with this pain and sorrow. I can spend my life crying over my fate. I can also choose not to get up in the morning. But for me, this is not an option. And it ginge it. I am a redhead. I choose to continue living Thank you. I choose to continue living and to thank Hashem every morning. I thank Hashem every day for what I have now. In this moment, I have you. I have my family here. Toda Hashem ala izdamnut azot. I thank Hashem that I managed to stand 
on my own two feet that I see, that I eat, because I know that there are people who are incapable of doing even this. My choice to live is the victory over the enemy who called my sons, because what they really wanted was to break my spirit, to destroy my ability to choose, to rise us, and to be active. But I turned my grief into a new melody. It's a melody of love to my special nation. In my meeting, in my meetings with the Jewish people, I implies the unifying between things that unite, uni, unite us. We share the same history, the same heritage, the same dream. We have much more in common than what is different between us. So, Mechubadai, distinguished guest, my parents dream and the dream of our people was realized exactly today, 71 years ago on Kaftet of November. And now, Baruch Hashem, we have amazing country. It is our responsibility to continue this dream and this amazing story of the Jewish people. The way to do this is through Jewish unity. We stand before a big challenge to learn how to live together, feel responsibility and respect for each other. Hannah Senesh wrote 76 years ago, Kol kara vehalachti. Halachti ki kara kol. A voice called out and I went. I went because the voice called. I believe that today the mission of the Jewish nation is to create a new voice, a call of love and acceptance, a call of unity between all different type of Jewish, orthodox, reform, secular, religious, left and right. The picture of my nation includes everybody, men, women, the people of Israel, and the Jewish of the diaspora. Tonight, the Israeli-American Council has succeeded in bringing us all together from all corners of the United States and Israel for a gathering of lovers and supporters of the Israeli state. We could have different thoughts, but we are brothers and sisters. We are one family, one nation, one people, and the land of Israel is the homeland of all the Jewish people. Because of that, we all bear responsibility for the future of this incredible state. Only when we are united can we stand strong before our enemies. So the story of our nation is the story of the dreamers that share the same goal and march together to achieve that goal, and they never, ever lost 
the hope. And I can't finish with not using the best language on this world. And como a safa ivrit. Ba a safa ha ivrit. I a safa shela ama yudi. Zot a safa shela zehut shelanu. Vane rotsa lo marlachem chavirim. Ani margisha she bati la bait sheli. Ani ro out chem kan. אני רואה את העיניים שמתגעגעות לישראל. אני רואה אתכם באוטו עם שירי ארץ ישראל. אני רואה כאן אנשים שמזכירים מקומות בגעגוע. אני מרגישה שאני עם האחים שלי, עם המשפחה שלי. אבל אנחנו צריכים לזכור. ביום ראשון נדליק את נרות חנוכה. לפני אלפיים שנה היוונים רצו לשבור את הרוח של עם ישראל. הגעתי לארצות הברית וכאן הרוח של עם ישראל. יש כאן רוח ואמונה ואהבה לעם ישראל. השאלה שלי, האם זה רק לכם? מה יהיה עם הילדים? עם הנכדים, עם הדור הבא, האם נצליח להעביר להם את הרוח הזאת? האם גם מי שלא שירת בגולני ומי שלא חי בארץ ימשיך את הרוח הזאת? זה תלוי בנו, בכל אחד מהיושבים כאן. אתם נרות חנוכה, אתם צריכים להדליק את האור במשפחה של כל אחד מכם, בסביבה של כל אחד מכם, אתם צריכים ליצור את החנוכיה, את הרוח של עם ישראל. והיא תישאר לא ל-70 שנה, לעוד 70 אלף שנה, שניפגש רק במקומות שבהם נהיה גאים ברוח הזאת. יום מבורך לכם. מרים. Thank you, uh, Miriam, for your inspiring story of dedication, sacrifice, and pride. You are making us all very proud here. And you are here at home in your family. Yes. Thank you for coming and giving us this inspirational Thank speech. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Miriam has recently won Israeli prize for a life achievement of strengthening the Israeli Jewish spirit. And <laughs> on behalf of the 3,000 Israeli American members here and Jewish Americans on behalf of all our community. I want to give you a token of our appreciation and tell you that you're also making our spirit, the Israeli American spirit, extremely strong. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is for you. Wow. Thank <laughs> עוד נזכה לראות את הילדים שלנו שבים הביתה. את משפחת גולדין היקרה, שאול ומנגיסטו, בעזרת השם, עוד השנה שבים הביתה. תודה מרים, תודה תודה.